We get to know Jerry Fletcher, a taxi driver in New York, who seems to have a conspiracy theory about every topic and makes his passengers aware of it, whether they want to or not. He picks up another passenger who can hardly separate from his girlfriend, and in this conversation, we learn that Jerry is hopelessly in love with a woman who doesn't seem to reciprocate his feelings. Furthermore, we learn that Jerry seems to have mental issues as he suddenly drifts away and then quickly regains his senses on the opposite lane. Moreover, Jerry appears to be a very curious individual who seems to enjoy observing his beloved from a safe distance. Feeling observed and somewhat pursued, Jerry enters his apartment in an unorthodox manner through the fire escape and the roof. Once home, we get introduced to his security methods and quirky decor. Later, he indulges in his actual passion, composing another issue of his magazine, Conspiracy Theory. He distributes the finished copies across the city the next day, placing them in as many different mailboxes as possible. Next, we meet the woman who has captured Jerry's heart, Alice Sutton, a lawyer at the Justice Department whom Jerry visits regularly to share his theories. Today, he drops by again with a fresh new theory involving supposed earthquakes and a potential threat to the president. However, Alice dismisses his theory with little attention, and when Jerry asks her out on a date, she unsurprisingly declines. As Jerry attempts to verify one of his theories, he notices a government car at the same location, which immediately raises suspicions. Jerry feels his theory is confirmed and decides to follow the government vehicle. Arriving at its destination, he realizes that the CIA is located in the same building. Before Jerry knows it, he is unexpectedly kidnapped by a group of men and forced into a car. He is taken to a remote location and subjected to an interrogation by a mysterious man who wants to know who Jerry has been talking to and who else knows. However, Jerry's habit of sharing his thoughts with almost everyone leaves him unable to provide specific answers to the questions. Jerry manages to free himself from the situation and attempts to escape, using almost comical slapstick methods to do so. His first destination after his escape is Alice. Jerry is extremely agitated and wants to tell Alice everything all at once, revealing that he managed to free himself by biting a man's nose. To outsiders, he appears like a wild and crazy person and ends up being taken into custody. Alice visits him in the hospital, and Jerry earnestly asks her to swap his name tag with the one of another man. When she visits him again the next day, she arrives just as they are removing a dead body from Jerry's room. It's the man with whom Alice had exchanged the name tag earlier. Her face turns pale as she realizes the situation. Jerry thanks her for saving his life, but she acts as if she hadn't swapped the name tags. Alice is asked to come to the morgue to identify the supposed Jerry Fletcher. There are also several people from various government agencies present. However, they realize that the dead man is not Jerry. Then Alice sees a man, a man with a thick bandage on his nose. He tells Alice that he was bitten by a dog, which will be put down today because of it. Meanwhile, Jerry feigns a heart attack to create a distraction and escape the situation. Just as he manages to slip out of the hospital room, the government agents who were about to confirm his death appear. A chase ensues through the hospital, but Jerry narrowly evades them, almost. He ends up stuck in a laundry chute. Luckily, Alice finds him first and assists Jerry in escaping again. Alice is further questioned by the man with the bandage on his nose, Dr. Jonas. He expresses curiosity about Jerry's strong interest in Alice. She simply believes he has a crush on her. Dr. Jonas, however, wonders why Alice lets Jerry's behavior continue unchecked and seems to be fine with his frequent unannounced visits to her office. In response, Alice shares the story of how Jerry saved her from two muggers one evening. She considers Jerry harmless and mainly eccentric. When Alice tries to leave in her car, Jerry makes himself known, having hidden inside after his escape. They head to Jerry's apartment, where he points out to Alice that they are being followed by the FBI. Jerry suggests a more direct approach to shake their pursuers, but Alice opts for a subtler method to lose them. Once they reach Jerry's apartment, he shows her the last copy of his magazine, which he believes has led to his current pursuit. Both now attempt to uncover why the government seems to be after Jerry. Alice learns that only five people received Jerry's magazine, and it appears that one of them might not be who they claim to be. As Jerry is about to make coffee, unannounced visitors appear and fire tear gas into the apartment. Jerry is prepared for this scenario and has a sophisticated escape plan. Jerry and Alice flee as he disguises himself as a firefighter and carries her out of the building. When they arrive at Alice's apartment, Jerry tries to make her understand that she's also in danger and shouldn't be home at the moment. However, when Jerry accidentally reveals that he has been observing her regularly, Alice kicks him out of the apartment. 
The next day, Alice's boss warns her that she should have nothing to do with Jerry Fletcher anymore, which raises suspicions for Alice. Through a bouquet of flowers, Jerry sends Alice a hidden message, knowing that she's being watched. The message instructs her to take the bus to meet him. Jerry, however, has rigged the pursuer's car, causing them to quickly drop out of the chase. Alice tells Jerry that she tried to contact his subscribers, but four out of the five have mysteriously died in the last 24 hours. He then reveals to her the masterminds behind all this. Essentially, it's a power struggle between two rival organizations, and they've become entangled in the middle. Shortly after, Jerry confesses his love for Alice at the subway station, but she doesn't reciprocate his feelings, leaving him hurt as he takes the next train. Upon learning that the fifth subscriber has set up a forwarding address to the Manhattan Criminal Courts building, she makes her way there. To her surprise, she encounters Dr. Jonas at the office. He reveals to her that he conducted highly classified and illegal experiments on behalf of the CIA involving mind control, aiming to turn individuals into unaware killers. The program was eventually terminated, but the techniques they developed were continued by others. He is now seeking out those responsible for continuing the program. He also informs her that Jerry was one of his subjects and is dangerous. He claims that Jerry is even responsible for her father's death. After this revelation, Alice decides to collaborate with Dr. Jonas, aiming to help him get to Jerry. He contacts Alice using a pizza box, which gets then wired, and because of that the two are followed by Jonas's men. When Jerry senses they are being followed, he abruptly stops the car on the bridge and switches vehicles with Alice. They manage to escape their pursuers and head to Connecticut, as Jerry has something to show Alice there. Alice turns on her cell phone, which allows them to get tracked again. Now Alice realizes that they are on their way to her father's farm. Arriving at the farm, Alice confronts Jerry, and he tells her that he was programmed to kill her father, but couldn't do it when he saw Alice on the way. He reveals that he even became friends with her father, and he helped Jerry regain his memories. The actual killing was carried out by someone else, who was hired by Dr. Jonas. Jerry couldn't prevent it, and arrived too late. With his dying breath, Alice's father gave him a photo of Alice and asked him to protect her. After successfully tracking Alice's phone, Jonas's men appear on the scene and manage to kidnap Jerry. As Alice's superior is shot and killed, she escapes. An attempt by Jonas's men to shoot her also fails. Alice, along with the FBI, visits the location where she encountered Jonas before, only to find it empty and devoid of any evidence. During this, she confronts Agent Lowry about his motives in this game, as he also seems unusually interested in Jerry Fletcher. Alice discovers that Lowry isn't actually with the FBI, but is part of a secretive shadow organization aiming to stop Jonas. Meanwhile, Jerry is held captive in a long-abandoned wing of a hospital. Alice discovers his location through various clues and calls Agent Lowry for assistance. A shootout ensues between Lowry's and Jonas's men. Jerry and Jonas engage in a physical struggle, but Jonas manages to grab his weapon and shoot Jerry. In response, Alice shoots and kills Dr. Jonas. With Jerry gravely injured, he confesses his love to Alice once more, and she reciprocates this time. Jerry is then taken away in a rescue helicopter, but seemingly succumbs to his injuries. Alice later visits his grave and places a badge he had given her on it. She decides to take up horseback riding again, which doesn't go unnoticed by Jerry, who is revealed to have faked his death to protect both of them. In exchange for this protection, Lowry demands all the information Jerry has about Jonas. When Alice finds the badge on the saddle blanket of her riding horse shortly afterward, she too realizes that Jerry is still alive. That was Conspiracy Theory, a star-studded conspiracy thriller from 1997. I hope you enjoyed this recap and I look forward to our next encounter. Until then, take care and see you soon on this channel.